Hi, everyone. Uh, before we get properly started, just so I can you know, better understand who you guys are and try and make this uh, better suited to, to your needs, who here uh, considers themselves a developer, so you write PHP or JavaScript code? Who here uh, considers themselves a site builder, so you configure sites, install modules, but don't necessarily write code? How about uh, users, so you use a site that someone else built? Okay, wow. I'm really glad I asked, because there's far more developers here than I was expecting for a uh, site builder track uh, presentation. Uh, how about, how many people consider themselves a beginner? <laughs> beginner site building, I guess? Drupal, yeah, okay. <laughs> how about uh, intermediate? And advanced? Okay, so uh, this presentation is definitely mostly geared towards uh, site builders on the beginner and intermediate end. Um, definitely there's stuff for, for users, you know, if uh, you see something that you think is awesome here and you can go bug the person who built your site, say, hey, Drupal can do this thing, why can't our site do that? Um, and definitely the, the second half of the presentation is, is more advanced. Uh, we're going to be talking in general about what Drupal distributions are. Uh, maybe you should consider using one, maybe you should consider creating one. Um, and then we're going to look in specific at uh, Panoply, which is a Drupal distribution. Okay. So I'm David Snowpeck. I'm a freelance Drupal developer. I'm one of the co-maintainers of Panoply and 20 or so other uh, Drupal modules. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to say, if you, if you have a question, uh, just like hold up your hand or yell it out and I'll repeat it to the microphone, unless I forget, and then also yell that out that I should repeat it into the microphone. Um, but that, that helps me uh, understand if uh, you guys are understanding what I'm saying or if I should slow down and explain something better. So we've been at Drupal Camp, to la or Drupal Con, for the last couple of days talking about things you can do with Drupal. Uh, what are some of the types of sites that you can build with Drupal? Come on, guys, y yell something out. What's a type of site you can build with Drupal? I'm sorry? A commerce site, an e-commerce site, what else? A blog? Company intranet? Yeah. What was the last one? Yeah, like an events calendar or some sort of event planner. I put a, a couple of those on uh, my slides, but really, like, the possibilities are unlimited. I'm not really aware of a class of site that you couldn't build with Drupal. I mean, sometimes uh, there's other considerations that might make uh, another platform better in a certain situation, but you can build pretty much anything. But what does Drupal give you out of the box immediately after install? Who here has installed Drupal 7? Or at least seen what it looks like out of the box? Sweet. So for those of you who haven't seen it, you get this blue thing. Uh, which is sort of a simple blog with a not so great content editing experience. The thing is, nobody actually wants this thing. You know, when you're hoping and dreaming about your new website, you're not thinking of this. You know, this meets no client requirements document ever. You couldn't go live with this. You know, you're going to have to dig through the 26,000 modules on Drupal.org, find the things you need, install them, configure them, mold it into the site that you actually want. And that's the power of Drupal, right? You know, whatever you want to do, there's a module for that. But that work is up to you out of the box. What most people actually want is something that sort of feels like a website. Uh, this screenshot is from uh, a Drupal distribution called Open Public for creating local government websites. After you install it, it's a website for a local government, right, with demo data. All you have to do is go through there, replace the demo data with actual information about your local government, and you could go live with that in a matter of hours. Yeah, you need the core functionality for your site. Uh, this screenshot is from Commerce Kickstart, which after you install it, has a product catalog, uh, checkout, shopping cart, all the basic functionality of an e-commerce site. And you know, it's built on Drupal Commerce, which is a fleet of modules for creating sort of infinitely flexible e-commerce systems. You could create anything with it, not just uh, you know, a shop with products, but it's so much easier when you're starting out to install something that works and modify it rather than starting from scratch and having to build it up, 
when you're beginning. You know, if you're already a Drupal commerce expert, the story is different. In short, people want something that is as close as possible to their end goal out of the box. You know, if you're building an e-commerce site, you want to worry about the products you're going to offer, the deals you're going to do, not creating basic shopping cart functionality. Uh, if you're creating a blog, you want to be thinking about the articles you're going to write, not implementing you know, basic comments and social sharing and all that stuff. You want to worry about the unique value proposition of your site and not you know, monkeying around with the plumbing. And if you work at an organization with lots of sites, or you're a freelance site builder or work at a Drupal shop, you know, and you're creating sites every day, there's probably some configuration you do on every single new site. Wouldn't it be great if Drupal just came out of the box that way? So this is where uh, Drupal distributions come in. Uh, who here is familiar with the idea of a Drupal distribution already? Oh, sweet, lots of people. Uh, so for those who haven't heard of this before, a Drupal distribution is Drupal prepackaged with a set of modules and themes and also some configuration. So you install it just like Drupal, but out of the box, it actually does something. And the great thing is that it still is Drupal, right? So if the distribution does X, but you really need X plus Y, you can still dig into that pool of 26,000 contrib modules and extend it. So here are some popular uh, open source distributions. These are projects you can download off of Drupal.org and install right away. Uh, Commerce Kickstart, we already talked about, Open Public. Uh, open Atrium for building an internal collaboration tool for an organization to be your intranet. Uh, Drupal Commons for creating an online community if you want to have your own Facebook. Uh, open Academy, university department sites. Julio, uh, school and high school websites. Uh, demo Framework. This is a really interesting example. Uh, Acquia makes Demo Framework. I'm sure everyone's familiar with Acquia. If you're not, they're one of the biggest Drupal shops. Uh, Dries, the founder of the Drupal project, works there, also the founder of Acquia. Anyway, when they go to a client to try and sell them on the idea of Drupal, to give them a demo of Drupal, they don't show them Drupal 7 out of the box. Instead, they take this Drupal distribution, which has a lot of the common modules. Uh, you can set it up for common use cases all, already built out for the way you would see an actual production site and show them that. Erpl, uh, it's an internal project management and customer management tool. So if you ran a Drupal shop and you wanted to manage all of your projects internally using a Drupal site, you totally could with Erpl. And Panoply, which we'll be talking about uh, in some detail very soon. So those were all uh, public distributions. Those are like products you can download and use. Um, but lots of organizations also create custom distributions uh, for use internally, just to make their own lives easier. Uh, here's some big examples. But, you know, who knows how many others, right? No one's under any obligation to tell us that they made an internal distribution. Uh, it, they can keep that private. And these are some big examples, but even small to medium-sized organizations can benefit from creating an internal distribution. Uh, as a freelance uh, Drupal developer, I've created internal distributions for a number of organizations on the smaller end. So here's some reasons why you might want to do that. Um, you know, if you're a Drupal shop, you probably don't create uh, entirely unique sites every time. You probably operate in some niche. So you could create a distribution that does all of that same setup you're doing on every site out of the box, uh, reduce the work you do. Uh, if you have a number of sites, uh, like a university or a government where you're launching new sites all the time, uh, you build out your distribution once and then deploy as many times as you'd like. So an alternative uh, to creating a distribution is just cloning sites, right? You build out one site, and then you're about to launch site number two, which is going to have some of the same functionality. So you just clone the first site and then modify it, right? And that could work, uh, except when you have to change some of that shared functionality between both sites. Now you have to log into site number one and change it, and log into site number two and change it. And maybe with two sites, that could work too, right? But not with 10 sites or 50 sites or 100 sites. Instead, if you create a distribution, 
you can just update the distribution and then that will deploy to all, your, all of your existing sites. So what is Panoply? Uh, Panoply is at least three things, which makes it a little hard to explain and certainly a lot harder for us to develop. Uh, the first thing is that it is a Drupal distribution itself, um, but it's a starter distribution. It's a blank slate, like the way that Drupal 7 core is a blank slate. It doesn't you know, impose any use case on you, but we think of it as an improved blank slate. It includes a number of things that a lot of people want, uh, for example, WYSIWYG, media support, responsive layouts, uh, and some panel stuff, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But if you're just getting into Drupal, uh, you're just getting into site building, starting with Panoply, I think, can be a better place to start than with vanilla Drupal 7. And I hope uh, I'll be able to convince you of that when we get to the demo portion. Panoply is also a base distribution. Uh, who here is familiar with the idea of a base theme? Okay, about half. So a uh, theme in Drupal is what controls the visual appearance of a site. So when you want to make your site look unique, you create your own theme. Uh, you can create your own theme from scratch, starting from the beginning. Or instead, you could start from a base theme. Uh, some common examples are Zen, Omega, Adaptive Theme. And that allows you to take advantage of some of this uh, shared work that the community has already done and allowing you to focus more on what makes your design unique. So uh, Panoply is a base distribution in the same way you know, Zen is a base theme. And you can build your own distribution on it uh, and save some of the you know, low-level work, some of the decision about approach, uh, and just focus on what makes your distribution unique. Who here is familiar with the features module? Who here has actually created a feature with the features module? OK. If, if you're a site builder and you're at the sort of intermediate level and you want to take your game to the advanced level, definitely go learn about the features module. It's super useful. Um, what the features module allows you to do is to take some of the configuration you did in your Drupal site, so the pointing, clicking, uh, you know, configuring content types, creating views, and export that automatically into a module. And then you can take that module, enable it on another site, and it will make that configuration happen on that other site. So it's a way of reusing configuration uh, between different sites. And Panoply is actually made up of about a dozen or so features modules that provide like each of the individual things that Panoply does. So there's like a Panoply admin module which does the admin improvements, a Panoply WYSIWYG module that sets up the WYSIWYG. So if you wanted to take just a piece of what Panoply does and put it on your vanilla Drupal site, you totally can. Like if you liked the WYSIWYG stuff and wanted that on your Drupal site, you can just download the Panoply WYSIWYG module, run the make file, and install it. So yeah, to try and summarize this rather complicated slide, uh, you know, it's the set of modules. When you install the distribution, you're basically getting them all at once. Uh, but you could also take them piecemeal, and you can use that as a basis of creating your own distribution if you wanted. So one of the main focuses of Panoply is improving the user experience. And you'll see a lot of this when we get to the demo portion. Uh, but right away, I just want to explain some of the user experience principles that uh, we use in Panoply. So first of all, we try to do a lot of the obvious user experience improvements that pretty much everyone is already doing anyway, right? If you're an experienced site builder, there's a set of modules and things you do on every site, and all experienced site builders are doing roughly the same thing. Uh, for example, uh, installing uh, one of the modules that puts a filter on the modules page. I mean, we could argue over which module should we use to do that, but I think we could all agree that having a filter on the modules page is objectively better. Or um, replacing the out-of-the-box content list page with the one that comes from the admin views module. I don't know anyone who prefers the built-in one. You know, the, the one in admin views is objectively better. So rather than everyone having to relearn all of these sort of best practice, obvious UX improvements, we just put them in there out of the box. So we want to keep users and site managers on the front end of the site and off of the back end. So rather than them seeing a page, and having to sort of figure out what is that page, is that a view, is that a panel, and having to go then dig into the back end, the appropriate place to change it, learn how to use that and change it. You know, we want to allow them to change uh, 
this content on a page while being on the same page that they're viewing it. So editing things where they're displayed rather than digging into the back end. Uh, we want to keep the Drupalisms behind the scenes so any internet literate user should be able to easily understand the concepts that they need to know in order to customize their site. Uh, they shouldn't have to know what a view or a block or a panel is in order to do the type of customization that we want to allow them to do. And this applies to users and site managers, right? Because if you're the site builder, you're stuck with Drupalisms. You know, you have to know these things. But we don't want to require our users to. Yeah, and trying to show live previews and previews wherever possible. You know, we shouldn't have the action of changing something really far removed from seeing its effect. You know, for example, uh, to change a block on a page, you'd have to go to admin structure blocks, you know, add a new block, set up some configuration, press save, and nothing happens, right? You have to go all the way back to the front end to see it happening. So trying to show users the effects of their changes as quickly as possible. So, panels has a lot of love and a lot of hate. There's a lot of strong emotions about panels. Uh, who here uh, has used the panels module before? Uh, who here loves panels? Who here hates panels? <laughs> awesome, then this slide has a purpose. Who here has mixed feelings about panels? That's pretty much everybody, yeah. <laughs> so, I started out in the... Uh, Hating panels camp, definitely. I'm a developer, so for me, panels is just another pointy clicky thing, and I don't want to do pointy clicky things. I want to write code, right? And a lot of site builders don't like panels because uh, it's complicated. There's a whole bunch of new terminology and concepts you need to learn. There's a learning curve. The uh, page manager, which is the default user interface for working with panels, is confusing. It's complicated. Um, but it was Panoply that really won me over into the, the loving panels camp. Uh, and I think it's because of the way that we have chosen to use it. Um, we're not just including panels in the page manager, but the best of the panels ecosystem. So about a half dozen uh, other modules that improve panels, that extend it. Uh, here are a couple of the big ones. We also try to hide the nastiness uh, from users, which is mainly the page manager. Uh, the golden rule of Panoply is that users and site managers will never see the page manager. Instead, we give them an alternate interface called the IPE. So if your only experience with panels is with panels in the page manager, uh, what you're going to see in the demo with Panoply is going to be new to you. And the way that we use all of these things together allows you to create really amazing experiences for your users and site managers. And you can create these experiences even without writing any code. You know, you can do it using views, using fieldable panel panes, which is really just another way of saying entities and fields. And we'll talk about that a little bit when we get to the demo. So actually, here comes the, uh, the demo. Uh, this is going to be a mixture of slides and uh, actually looking at a Panoply site. So the first thing that Panoply does is it enables a bunch of super popular uh, contrib modules. If you've done any site building in the past, you probably recognize a lot of these. Uh, maybe some of the ones towards the middle are uh, panel-specific stuff you might not recognize, but you know, Views, Path Auto, uh, WYSIWYG, uh, jQuery Update. I mean, these are modules that everyone is using. And uh, Panoply will also update all of these modules uh, if there's a security update, you know, we try to make a panel, uh, Panoply release on the same day that a security update comes out. We also try to take care to select the correct versions of the modules so they work together. Uh, there can be some interesting interactions, for example, between Media and WYSIWYG, and we take care of all of that for you. So if you're using Panoply, you no longer have to worry about managing this set of really popular modules. You just update Panoply, we'll take care of that for you. Layouts. So uh, every website has to deal with layouts somehow. Uh, usually an individual site has a couple of layouts, you know, three or four. Um, the traditional way in Drupal to do layouts is through the theme system, but there's a plethora of other ways. You can, you know, use context and beans. You can use panels. Um, Panoply uses panels. Um, and through panels, we provide this set of layouts. Uh, they're all responsive. They're all cross-browser tested. They'll work in most themes. And uh, the user can switch between the layouts 
uh, arbitrarily and move pieces of content between them in real time on the page they're looking at, all WYSIWYG style. And I'll show you that right now. So this is a fresh install of Panoply 1.6. Uh, when you're installing Panoply, you get the option to install the demo data, uh, and that's where all of these vegetable pictures and this initial content is coming from. Uh, if you disable that module later, it'll remove all of that content, so there's really no uh, risk in enabling it. Uh, hang on, I have to log in. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, so the, the demo content is provided by a module called Panoply Demo. And uh, during install, it'll ask you if you want to enable it, and it's just a checkbox. Uh, so you, you don't have to, but if you do, once you uninstall it, it'll remove all of this extra content. So you don't have to worry about it adding junk to your site. So these two buttons down at the bottom, uh, this customize this page and change this layout buttons, are from the panel's IPE. Um, let's try changing this layout. Uh, this is the current layout selected. Let's switch that to uh, sidebar on the left. Bam. So now the, the front page has a sidebar on the left rather than on the right. This page is already live. Done. Let's try clicking customize this page. And here we can grab individual uh, pieces of content on the page and move them around. So we can take this uh, content demo item, move it to the sidebar. Uh, you'll notice over here, uh, this image got smaller. It resizes to the amount of available space it has. And if we click Save, bam, this page is now live. Yeah? For the images within size in different areas, uh, if you're about to go over this, I apologize, but uh, are you using some kind of like display tool or something to provide some kind of bigger concern the actual size of the image's output? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, no, but I can answer the question right now. So, so the question was, um, the, when the image resizes like that, is it uh, just resizing in CSS or is it actually resizing it on the server? It's basically the question, yeah. So we, we do use uh, an image style uh, to reduce them so we, we won't have like a gigantic image. Uh, we have sort of a maximum size that the image style outputs, and then after that, it resizes it in CSS. We do not have real responsive images. Uh, we are talking about integrating the picture module, which is a backport from Drupal 8, which does do responsive images, but we, we haven't gotten to that yet. Um, there is a feature in the WYSIWYG where if you resize the image in the WYSIWYG, uh, it will create a resized version on the server and serve that but just not for the general output of images everywhere else. Yes? Absolutely. Yeah, that I was about to show. Uh, so here, we'll do, it, we'll do it straight away. Oops. So you can see here we reduced the width a little bit, and uh, already you can see some changes. The, uh, menu items uh, become big finger push buttons. This is probably like a tablet size. You can also see that the images in the content also got smaller to deal with the amount of available space that they have. If we reduce it even further, uh, you'll see the menu go behind this uh, hamburger icon there, and uh, the content switch to a single column layout. So this would be the full mobile version. Uh, the layouts are all responsive, all the ones that come with Panoply. Uh, the theme that we bundle is responsive Bartik, which is actually a backport of the Drupal 8 Bartik theme, uh, which is fully responsive. So yeah. Uh, yes? Mm-hmm. like really specifically. Uh, so uh, in uh, Panoply right now, we have a custom grid system that does this. Uh, we're in the process of switching to a set of identical layouts called Radix layouts, which use the bootstrap uh, grid system. Uh, but that's, that's coming soon, not quite yet. Uh, question over here? How soon? How soon? <laughs> 
So you can already use Radix layouts, uh, which will replace the Panoply layouts with identical ones that use the Bootstrap grid system. Uh, we just haven't removed ours and bundled it in, in the core distribution. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so, so the question was, uh, if you wanted to have more stuff happen when responding, uh, such as uh, different pieces of content disappearing or turning into an accordion or whatever, how would you accomplish that? Um, and I think the answer is just the standard sort of Drupal answer. There's a lot of ways to do that. And what we're doing uh, certainly wouldn't prevent you from doing anything you otherwise could do in Drupal. Uh, if you want to do it at the theme layer, uh, you totally could, um, you know, replacing the templates and injecting the classes. Uh, I think there might be some, uh, like, panels plugins that allow you to say that this pane will disappear when the screen gets below a certain size. Uh, but we don't do anything that will hurt or help you doing that uh, beyond, you know, what you can do in normal Drupal. <laughs> yes. I guess for, uh, we've got like 40 layouts here, right? Mm-hmm. So in a way, you are hurting people by going to handle 40 layouts. Right. So you don't have to uh, give your users access to all of the layouts. Uh, if you chose for your site or your distribution just to support a subset of the layouts, you totally could. Um, yeah, if you wanted that level of control, I guess that would be, that would be the way to go. Uh, the layouts come from a module called Panoply Theme, uh, which really just provides those layouts. So if you didn't want them at all and just to, like, address that problem yourself, you would disable that module or not include it in your distribution. Uh, so back to the slides for a moment. So search, uh, the core Drupal search is designed to run on as many platforms as possible, including like $5 a month hosting. It's not designed to be particularly featureful or performant. Uh, so Panoply replaces the built-in Drupal search with a suite of modules called Search API, which out of the box gives you a uh, faceted search. You can see on the right sidebar the filter by type. Um, and also allows you to easily swap out the search backend for Apache Solar, uh, which is a real search engine if you had big search needs. But yeah, like, like I keep saying, if you didn't want uh, the search customizations that we do, you could just disable this module and do your own thing, right? Uh, or in your own distribution, uh, all of our modules come with their own make file. So if you didn't include Panoply Search in your distribution's make file, it wouldn't even download the dependencies for it. It wouldn't pull in search API and all of that junk. So you can slim it down to just the things you need. WYSIWYG. Uh, so whether or not WYSIWYG is actually a good idea, and there's a lot of valid arguments on both sides of that, um, users love it. Uh, some users expect it, and it's going to be in core in Drupal 8. So Panoply does provide. Um, a WYSIWYG configuration. Um, in Drupal 7, you know, just turning on WYSIWYG is actually quite easy, like just getting the WYSIWYG editor to appear. But in practice, there's a plethora of problems that appear. Uh, the first one is, you know, which of those buttons in the toolbar to include. Uh, turning on the buttons in the toolbar is super easy. There's like 100 options. You just check a checkbox for each of them. But some of them are a terrible idea. Uh, for example, uh, letting them change the font. You know, they'll put everything in Comic Sans, destroy, you know, the, all the time you put into perfectly selecting the fonts for your site. Yeah. Uh, or letting them change the font size. You know, they'll make one line be 50 point and another line be 52 point. There'll be no consistency. Uh, and anyway, you don't want them, you know, changing font size for headers. You want them, you know, using semantic headers anyway. Uh, so carefully selecting uh, which buttons to include is difficult. But just removing the button doesn't make it impossible to put that content into the WYSIWYG. If they copied something from another web page or from Word, it will put it in the WYSIWYG editor, even if the button's not available. So you also have to set up filtering rules to remove the things that you don't want to be in there. 
And then beyond filtering for control, you also have to filter for security. Uh, there's a number of tags, uh, namely the iframe tag and the script tag that attackers could put in there uh, to spy on your users or steal their personal information. And even beyond that, you know, some of the features that users expect in WYSIWYG don't come with WYSIWYG out of the box. So you need to install additional Drupal modules, additional libraries to get that to work. So even though turning it on is pretty simple, really tuning it and getting it right is rather difficult. So let me show you what uh, the WYSIWYG configuration that we've set up in Panoply looks like. So the first thing uh, is, uh, by default, we just show these simple WYSIWYG buttons, and you have to click this other button to see some of the more advanced options, so we don't overwhelm the user with too many options. Uh, let's look at uh, media, inserting images, uh, which is something that WYSIWYG doesn't do out of the box and is relatively difficult to get set up. Yes, we use the media module. We use a very specific uh, checkout from the 2x branch, uh, and we try as much as possible to keep updating it as new versions come out, but that is uh, problematic for everyone. But the, the version that we bundle uh, is well tested, so you don't have to worry about dealing with media's bugs. Um, we have a couple of patches applied. We have an extensive B hat test suite that does test media to a certain degree. So uh, using our media will be less work <laughs> to uh, be stable than uh, going your own. A feature we just added recently, uh, being able to manually crop things. So you just wanted the kitten's super cute face. And what's that tool there? Uh, that's from the manual crop module. But let's not show that. Oh, come on. And you're able to choose uh, an image style before you insert, whether you want the original image or quarter size. And returning to an earlier question, um, if you resize the image here, we have the image resize uh, module enabled, so it will generate it on the server side. If you have uh, images, you'll need image captions. Another extension to WYSIWYG that we include. Whoa, my computer just turned off. Hold on a moment. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah, um, I used up my battery too much before coming to this presentation. I'm sorry, guys. I'll, I'll get this back online in a moment. Okay, while we are waiting, are there any additional questions? Sure. Uh, what about um, CK Editor and the WYSIWYG? Uh, mm -hmm. Is that on the near future roadmap? Or? It, it's definitely on, on the roadmap. I don't know who was able to tell, but that was TinyMCE. Um, we have a patch in the issue queue for switching to CK Editor. Uh, it's something that uh, we would like to do to get in line with Drupal 8 and uh, to allow you to use the edit module. It's uh, from Spark, allowing to, you to edit fields in line. Yes? Mm -hmm. So in, in, the, uh, in Panoply out of the box, uh, the, I'll repeat the question. The question was about SEO tools. Uh, in Panoply out of the box, uh, we don't uh, bundle any uh, SEO tools, but there is a Panoply SEO module, which is maintained by the community, uh, which includes uh, meta tags, um, and a couple of others. I, I can't recall off the top of my head, but uh, there is uh, an add-on module for that, and it's actually provided as an app, uh, which you can like go into uh, the app section on Panoply and just say, I want to install that. Any other questions? Sure. How is it different to upgrade? 
So the steps, uh, the question was about how is it different to upgrade a distribution. Uh, the steps are a little bit different for upgrading a distribution than you would with just like your own site with a collection of modules. Actually, it's a lot like updating Drupal core. You can basically follow the same instructions you would for uh, going from like 7.27 to 7.28 with Panoply. The thing that you should not do um, is try to update the modules that Panoply provides individually. Uh, because we do keep them at very specific versions that are tested to work together. And so if you update something, um, it could break things. But we do uh, very regularly update what we have and test it and make sure everything works. Um, and for security releases, we will update as soon as possible. Uh, the modules will be under Profiles uh, Panoply modules. So they'll be in a physically different place, which makes it a little easier. I'm really sorry, guys. I should have plugged this in as soon as I got up here. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, so uh, I'm a member of the Drupal security team. And uh, my main goal of being a member of the Drupal security team is to keep tabs on the security issues that affect Panoply. So we know about them before everyone else does, which allows us to have our release ready for the same day that the security issues uh, come out. I can't guarantee that we will always do that, uh, but we try really, really hard. And since uh, we've started operating that way, we have released on the same day as all the security issues. <laughs> in, in unrelated question, what desktop environment are you using? Uh, Notion, it's a fork of Ion, allows you to do everything without touching the mouse. We'll see what loads faster, LibreOffice with my local copy or Google Docs. Quick question on sub-themes. Oh, mm -hmm. Yes. For, for your custom work, you would still put any uh, custom modules or custom themes into Sites All Themes or the specific site directory if you worked that way. Um, we only bundle one additional theme, Responsive Bartik. Um, there are a number of themes designed specifically for Panoply. Uh, Kala theme that the Kalamuna guys created and uh, Radix, um, which OpenHRIM uses. Radix, R-A-D-I-X. And those are base themes to allow you to create uh, your own theme for Panoply. Uh, one quick question. Does that only work on Pantheon, or does it work on other? Components? No. Uh, the question was, does it only work on, on Pantheon? Um, and it'll work everywhere. Uh, I'm personally not affiliated with Pantheon. Uh, the, the lead maintainer, Matt Cheney, is also a founder of Pantheon, and the names are sort of similar, right? Uh, but there is no dependency between uh, Panoply and Pantheon. Yeah, in, in use for the OpenShift site? Or you mean it runs on OpenShift? Yeah. Yeah, there's a cartridge to run Panoply on OpenShift. Okay, sorry for the, the massive delay. Let's catch up to where we left off. I think we're still looking at uh, features of WYSIWYG. All right. Oh, come on, computer. I'm super sorry, guys. We'll, we'll end up having to, to cut off uh, probably the end of the demo once I finally get going again. Um, but if you have any additional uh, questions or want to see more, come talk to me. We're also doing a sprint, uh, a Panoply sprint on Friday. Uh, if you want to help out, anyone can help. 
Um, even if you're not a developer, uh, you know, just coming and testing and reporting bugs is super useful. Um, writing documentation as a new user, also super useful. I can never look at Panoply as a new user ever again. Um, so please come join us. Okay, maybe I'll move on to a later slide and come back to the live demo once my VM starts. Ah, oh, geez, but all those slides kind of depend. Any other questions, possibly? Yes. So, so the question was about uh, the workbench uh, module working with uh, Panoply and I guess like configuring uh, the panels part of a page. Yeah, I think that might be more of a, a feature that will need to be integrated into Panelizer. I don't think it creates revisions for the changes that you make to an individual page. Um, I don't know. We don't have any plans to work on that. That's a really interesting problem though. Are, are you doing an internal distribution or a public one? Okay. Yeah, I, I know that there's been a bunch of work by the Open Atrium team to make uh, Workbench work well uh, with Open Atrium, which is based on Panoply. Um, so it, it should work. Uh, but yeah, there is, there is currently no way to connect the content revisions with the revisions you're making in the IPE. Yeah, and there's a bug there too. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, you should report the bugs to the issue queue. <laughs> They're mostly in there. <laughs> oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Okay. And come to the sprint and help us fix them. <laughs> Okay, there's one more feature. I wanted to look at the WYSIWYG and then we'll look at the content editing experience, the more details about managing the layout. Sorry again for the, for the technical problems. Uh, so another module that we bundle additionally with WYSIWYG is the Linkit module. Uh, a number of users have trouble with links and URLs, like they don't even know what they are. Uh, so with Linkit, you can just type some keywords in a piece of content on the site. It'll give you a couple of options. You just select it and insert the link so the users never have to deal with URLs for the local site. So yeah, basically, you know, why create your own WYSIWYG configuration from scratch when you can take ours, which we've already put a ton of thought into what to include and how to configure it. So let's take a look at the content editing experience. Uh, we'll take a look at a new node. So who here has, or, sure. Yes. Yeah, so the question was about the admin menu, and uh, yeah, we are using a backport of Drupal 8's toolbar menu, which is called Navbar in Drupal 7. So there's sort of a theme of we're trying to use a lot of the stuff in Drupal 8, which we won't really be able to use Drupal 8 for another year or two, so you get to enjoy some of the improvements in Drupal 8 in Panoply. So who here has seen the uh, default Drupal 7 ad content page? Okay, so there's a couple of people who, who haven't seen it, and I'm due to the running out of time, otherwise I'd show it to you. Uh, but uh, we've made a number of customizations to the, the content ad page. Um, first of all, we, we put it in two columns, the way Drupal 8 uh, will also be putting the content ad page into two columns. Uh, we've removed some confusing and useless uh, stuff from this page, trying to get it down to the bare minimum that is necessary. Uh, for example, we don't have the uh, promote to front page checkbox under publishing options because that checkbox only actually does something if you don't replace the default front page. 
but everybody replaces the default front page. So now all of your users, for the end of time, are stuck with a checkbox that does nothing. Right? We also uh, installed the Save as Draft module uh, to get rid of the Publish checkbox. Now users have this Publish and Save as Draft button. We've also put a lot of thought into uh, changing the size and order of things based on importance. So the title is big and at the top of the page, like a title should be. Uh, below it, you have you know, the URL that the page is supposed to live at, which is also important, but we make it super tiny so it doesn't get in your way. Uh, so that's content. Um, you know, Drupal does awesome at content. Like, if you want to create a content type, uh, add a bunch of fields, and then create 100 instances of it, that's Drupal's bread and butter, right? Like, if we made a presentation content type, had a description, uh, had a link to the slides, date and time that the presentation took place, create a bazillion of them and make some views. Like, Drupal rocks at that. What Drupal does less good at is unique one-off landing pages. And there's a couple of solutions to that in Contrib. Uh, you could do like context and beans, panels is one of the solutions. Uh, the problem with even panels is that to do that, to create a landing page, you have to use the page manager. And the golden rule is users should not touch the page manager, it's too confusing. So in Panoply, uh, you can go to the add content page uh, and select landing page. This isn't a real content type, it's sort of like a pseudo content type. But users are already used to the flow of going to add content to create content, so they'll also come here to create landing pages. And underneath, uh, this is actually creating a page manager page. But rather than taking us to the page manager, it takes us straight to the page view, where we will then customize it with the IPE. Actually, first, let's give this page a layout. Give it a sidebar. Everybody loves a sidebar. And when you go to customize this page and click the Add button, you get a menu of things that you can add to the page. And they're all basic, just internet things, like add links, add file, add image. You know, there's, there's probably a million ways in Drupal to add an image to just one page on the site, and they're all really complicated, right? Like, you could do it with blocks, but you'd go, like, admin, structure, blocks, add your block, you'll put it in one of the regions. You don't really know what those regions are, you just have the names, right? You put it in the region, you set the visibility settings, say it's only visible on this page, click save, and who knows if it even worked, right? But with uh, Panoply, you just come here, click add image. Uh, but we're going to step it up. We're going to add a video. And I would have had this link ready. So this is again with the media module. You can put in either the URL or the embed code. And as soon as you make a change in the settings on the left, you see an immediate preview on the right. Any of the changes we make. So add a title. The title immediately appears. Uh, let's make it a link to Google. I'm hovering over the link. You can see it's already, well, let me put HTTP on there. You can see it's already a link to Google. And we already have our video live. Uh, you may have noticed I checked to make that uh, a reusable pane. Now we can come back here and see this reusable content tab. And I can click Add and have that same video. So this isn't a tool really for you, for site builders. This is a tool for your users. They can create you know, reusable uh, pieces of content that then they can use in several places on their site. Is there a question? Yeah, the, the, yes, the, the question was about uh, where is the reusable content available? Is it just on the page or on the whole site? And the answer is on the whole site. So the response, the videos are responsive. I think we're just doing it in CSS, though. So if I put it in the sidebar, you'll see the video gets smaller. Yeah, yeah. Yes? Yes. 
Uh, the question was, how do blocks work with this? Um, you can use blocks in panels. Um, and I personally also use blocks to do the, the header and the footer, but you, you don't have to do that. Does that answer your question? We, we, we can talk about it more afterwards. I want to try and get through more of this before I run out of time. Yes? Sorry. When you, so when you generate this content, is it creating a block behind the scenes that you then can add into other regions on other pages? Um, so they're not blocks. They're, they're panes from the panels world. Um, but, yeah, when you say, like, uh, make reusable and give it a name, then it is like a pane that you can reuse somewhere else. So actually, I don't want a video. Let's do a carousel. Everybody loves a carousel. We'll make it the cutest carousel ever. So you can see as I'm creating this carousel, it's already appearing up here in the preview area. Uh, what are you complaining about? Ooh, we found a bug during a live demo. Surprise. Um, one kitten is cute enough. <laughs> uh, let's add a content list to the sidebar. So this uh, widget is actually a view. Who, who here has used views before? Is familiar with creating views? Awesome. So if you're a site builder and you haven't used views, go learn it. It's like the number one Drupal module. It's uh, useful for a million different things. Um, so this one's provided as a view. And a lot of the settings you see on the left are actually view settings. Like we can say, uh, let's switch from being fields to content. And now we see teasers or the full content or make it into a table. Um, we can control which of the views fields are displayed. You can see it changing up here in real time. And when you're creating the view, you actually can say, like, which of these settings do you want to allow users to configure when adding it as a pane? Uh, so you could say, like, well, I still want them to be able to change, like, how many items are displayed, but I don't want them to change the display type. You can choose any of those view settings. So you would be creating these views for your users for their specific use case and giving them whatever controls you wanted them to have. Actually, this uh, content type select box up here, this is actually the exposed filter from the view. So you can uh, take any of the exposed filters on your view and say, I want them to appear as pane settings or I want them to appear actually at the top of the widget like a normal exposed filter. So this allows you to create really powerful tools for your users that are specific to their use case. So yeah, after a couple of minutes, we have something that, you know, sort of already looks like a front page, right? Not a very good front page, but we were able to, to very quickly put that together. So another thing you're, you're able to do is to provide your users with a menu of styles to apply to these widgets. Uh, if you click the little paintbrush guy... Uh, here you get the available styles. These three are provided by the Panoply demo module. They all look terrible. Um, you know, we can make it be blue, light blue, lime green. That's probably the most terrible we can make that look. Uh, but these are things that you create for your users. Uh, you can create them in your theme. You can create them in a module. There's a module called Stylizer that allows you to create these styles uh, using a point-and-click interface. And so you are able to give your users some control, which they like, but limit it to things that you know are going to look good. So yeah, like I was saying earlier, the things that Panoply provides are basic internet stuff. Like, it's a blank slate. But if you're creating, like, a distribution for uh, musicians, you would add your own things here, like add discography, you know, add album listing. Like, you're able to customize this to be the type of experience you want to provide. Return to the slides for a moment. Oh, geez. Yeah, so the most advanced use case of Panoply is creating your own custom distribution, and we won't be going into that uh, today since this is more of a beginner session, but if you're interested in it, uh, come talk to me. 
um, or come to the, the sprint on Friday. Uh, but we'll, we'll speak to it briefly uh, right now. You know, Panoply uh, guides distribution development. It, it provides a set of best practices for the low-level stuff, like creating your, your make file, um, you know, how to structure your modules, how to build your features, uh, how to create your custom things and integrate them into the same customization platform that Panoply is using. Um, this slide is sort of a, a thought exercise for the more experienced uh, site builders here. Uh, this distribution is Open Academy, um, which is built on Panoply, but let's pretend for the moment that it isn't, right? So this distribution allows department websites to list, you know, what courses are available, news, uh, events, and it provides this view, this course view. Um, if this were a normal Drupal site with this view, how uh, and, and the user wanted to customize it, how would they add some text, you know, up here between the course title and the actual listing? Yeah, so you'd go into views, edit it, create a header area, and put the text there, right? That assumes that the user who's using this knows that this is a view, first of all, right? And then it assumes that they know how to find where to edit views and add that header area, right? And that's, that's workable. You know, you could train your customers up enough uh, or your users on how to use views to do that. But, like, what if they want to add a video here, right? Like, show some video with their students smiling, you know, come take our courses. You know, it it's accelerates to a point where, you know, it's difficult to explain to them how to do that. Uh, in the Panoply model, uh, which uh, Open Academy actually does, instead of creating views pages, you would create all of your views as content panes and place them on a panel. So then uh, for people to extend it, like all of that stuff comes from Panoply. They just come here, click customize page, throw some text in there, throw a video in there, you know, remove some of the fields. So it allows them to, to customize the changes that you create for them within this same sort of WYSIWYG model. Uh, so here's some distributions built on Panoply. Uh, we talked about a number of them earlier. Demo Framework actually only uses like a module or two from Panoply, but that's totally a valid use. Um, open Church for building church websites, Restaurant for creating restaurant websites, uh, Push Tape for musicians, uh, MVP Creator is a pet project of mine. Um, these last two are really interesting examples. They're both internal distributions. Uh, I don't know, like, if Web Experience Toolkit would be useful to you not being the Canadian government, right? But it's really cool that they open source their code to let us see, you know, how they went about creating an internal distribution. Uh, quick shout outs. Um, Matt Cheney is the original creator of uh, Panoply and co founder of Pantheon Systems. Uh, Tom Kirkpatrick, uh, co founder of System Seed. Um, you know, we're the maintainers, right? Uh, but a lot of the credit goes to the Panoply community. We have a really active community on the issue queue. Our job is really to review and commit the stuff that everyone else is creating. Um, yeah, so please join us on Friday for the sprint if you can. Uh, sorry again for rushing through the end of that uh, and all of the technical problems. Um, oh, and I'm supposed to tell you to evaluate my presentation on uh, the Austin DrupalCon website. Please be kind. Um, and we have time maybe for like one more question. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, Mm -hmm. so, so there are, right, the, the question was about uh, Panoply apps, and there are a couple of apps available. It's not a very developed ecosystem. We'd, we'd like to develop it more. I, actually, I'd, I'd intended to call on someone over here. Mm -hmm. So when Panoply was originally, when uh, it was originally being created, there wasn't uh, WYSIWYG in Drupal 8 yet, and uh, TinyMC was used uh, and still is used by WordPress. So the initial uh, WYSIWYG was modeled after the experience that WordPress uh, gave, since they, they do have a very good content creation experience. Okay. Thank you, everyone.